Welcome to my 2024 desk setup video. This serves a lot of purposes for me, including video editing, gaming, audio recording, and of course, making videos like these. There's a lot of cool tech here that makes this all-in-one desk setup come to life. So whether you're looking for some inspiration or you're interested in upgrading your own setup, you can find the best deals for everything that I'm sharing from here today, link below. Living in New York now, that means I have a relatively small space to work with. With that, I needed to make my desk as multifunctional as possible without it feeling cramped. Starting things off, I'm using the Hohenam Electric Standing Desk. This measures 55 by 30 inches and is one of the largest motorized options you can buy for under $180. My priority here was finding a desk large enough that could fit everything nicely. You may notice that the top isn't a single piece of wood. That said, with the large Razor Strider Chroma mouse pad, it's not that obvious. Moving on to the star of the show, I'm using the Samsung 49-inch Odyssey G9. If you've never used a monitor like this before, it's a multitasking beast. Its resolution is super sharp at 5120 by 1440 and with 240 hertz in support for G-Sync and FreeSync, this is also super awesome for gaming. And because this is effectively two 27-inch monitors side by side, I can have two full windows open at the same time, research on one side and my script on the other, or as I usually like to have it, a massive video editing timeline spanning across the entire screen. And if I had to pick the single most important part of my entire setup, it would definitely have to be this monitor. And when you can find it on sale open box for under $500, this thing is an absolute steal. Powering everything, I'm usually using the M1 Max MacBook Pro 14 inch. Even though it's a few years old, it's still incredibly fast for most of my video editing. For my dock, I'm using the pluggable TBT4 UDX1, which can either drive two 4K 60Hz monitors or a single 8K 30Hz monitor. I've gone with this one because it has the perfect amount of USB Type-A and Type-C ports for my needs, as well as an SD card reader on the front. And the biggest advantage here for me is that I can just come home from work, plug in with one cable, and quickly get connected to the monitor, internet, and all my devices. To keep things a little bit more tidy, I found one of the cheapest but still really good looking vertical laptop stands and only cost $10. Moving on to the other side when I'm done with work or I'm waiting on a really long video edit to finish exporting, I can quickly switch over to my second somewhat hidden setup using the ASUS ROG Ally. This little guy is a gaming handheld that runs Windows 11. Its performance won't blow you away, but for its size and price, it's pretty amazing. Considering the only PC game that I really play nowadays is Overwatch 2, it's more than capable of hitting 100 to 120 frames per second at 1080p with a low to medium settings. And then connected to this, hidden behind there, I have a second smaller pluggable dock, which is pretty much a must considering that the Ally only has the one USB-C connection. And so with that, I can quickly connect to my monitor, LAN, audio interfaces, and all my peripherals. And then speaking of peripherals, I've gone with Razer for my mouse and keyboard. I recently put out a gaming setup video that takes a deeper dive into my picks, but basically I'm a huge fan of clean wireless gaming setups. So I went with this white Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro, which is one of the best low profile wireless mechanical keyboards you can buy today. But as I also said in that last video, I strongly believe to make the most of a Razer setup, you need to pair it with two or more peripherals to really take advantage of its light sync features, which is why I've gone with the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro, which in my experience is one of the most ergonomic mice I've ever tested. It's heavier than most of the competition, but in terms of one mouse that I can use both for gaming and productivity, for me, this thing can't be beat. Now, if you're really big into putting RGB into everything, you'll probably love the Razer Strider Chroma mouse pad. This is easily the most ridiculous and overpriced part of my entire desk setup, but arguably it's the one piece that also ties everything together. And as cool as it is to get the keyboard, mouse, and mouse pad all synced together, you can take things even further with these Yee-like cubes. As you can guess, just like the Razer picks, they're also super overpriced, but they're also my favorite part of this lighting setup. And then usually hidden off to the right here, I have the Belkin Boost Charge 2-in-1 charger, which I use to charge my iPhone 15 Pro, my AirPods Pro 2, and my Apple Watch. I've tried a few other charging stands in the past, but this is the one that I've tested that has the best MagSafe for holding up my phone, even when rotated horizontally to enter standby mode. I also happen to think it's one of the nicest looking, especially when not in use, because you can just fold it down and it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. And then off to this side is also quickly worth mentioning this EVE Smart Thermostat. And even though this has a cool app that lets you get notifications on your phone, I like this because of how simple it is and how long lasting its battery is on a single charge. And to add a little bit of fun to the desk, I've got the Timebox Evo. 
But even though you can use this to display the time, date, weather, this thing really stands out for the community and custom pixel art that you can also show on it. This is usually just cycling through a bunch of custom art and I love having this thing off to the side. Aside from my monitor, it's probably my audio setup that's the second most important thing to me. It's a downsize from the larger Rodecaster Pro 2 that I used to use until about a year ago, but it basically has the same core functionality and a much smaller footprint, which is perfect. But tied in with that, the Rode Studio arms deserve a big shout out as they're everywhere on this desk. Aside from being attached to this pod mic, I'm also using it in a MacGyvered fashion as one of my other key lights which is also my hair light right now. And occasionally I'll also use a third one to hold cameras like my a7S III. For audio playback, I'm usually using the Edifier 360 dB speakers. They're pretty overkill for just monitoring audio, but it's also one of the best 2.1 channel Bluetooth speaker systems that you can get for under $500 and an absolute steal when it goes on sale for under $400. When I'm trying to be a little bit more quiet, I usually switch over to the Rode NTH100s. I really like these because of how comfortable they are. They've also got this Alcantara gel here that's plush and it manages to stay super cool even with longer gaming or editing sessions. And beyond having a really great high quality neutral sounding profile, these things are also built like a tank and they're also relatively affordable at just $100. You've seen a lot of it in the B-roll so far, but lighting has become an especially important part of this setup. A big part of what sets the mood here is this GE Smart light strip, which is wrapped around the tabletop of my desk. While technically not part of my desk, right above it, I have an IKEA lamp with a GE Sync smart bulb that can also do the same lighting effects as my desk and sync them together for a really cool effect. And I've gone with the Echo Show 5 because it's basically dirt cheap and even though it's small, it has a pretty nice display that shows me all the information I need and allows me to make smart home controls easily. And then lastly, as I mentioned, MacGyver to one of these, I have the Molus G200 by Zhiyun. This tiny light packs a huge punch at 200 watts. Not only does it take up less footprint, being able to attach directly to my desk, it's also a huge time saver because of how easily I can dial in my lighting. So there you have it. That's my entire desk setup for 2024. I went through a lot here, but I'll have everything linked below if you want to learn more. And of course, let me know what you think about these picks in the comments down below. And if you have any other suggestions that you think I should try out for another future video, be sure to share them there as well. For more awesome tech, you can follow us everywhere at Tom's Guide. You can also follow me for a more behind the scenes look into how I make videos like this and other cool tech that I'm reviewing. Until the next one, I'll catch you later.